Hi. I'm currently making a first-person shooter game, and I recently came across a video by Milsim Enthusiast Dyslexy that showcases the projectile physics in the game, Armor 3, by Bohemia Interactive. And I was really impressed by it. They've done a really great job. And I decided that I just had to have these physics in my game. So I'll do a demonstration of what I've done in the Unreal Engine. I've used the same color coding as Dyslexy. So the bullet velocity starts out red, it turns yellow, green, blue, and eventually white. The Unreal Engine doesn't come bundled with penetration, so I've implemented that. You can see the bullet loses a lot of velocity and then punches out the back. This is slightly thicker material, and this time the bullet just embeds itself in there. You can penetrate as many layers of material as you like. Just like in Armour 3, after each penetration, the trajectory of the projectile is slightly altered. I've also added more realistic ricochets. I found out that in real life, hard surfaces like metal, asphalt, or concrete, bullets will all, always ricochet fairly parallel to the material, even if you're nearly perpendicular. So you can see that in action. I'm not sure what the realistic behavior is on softer materials, but I keep them as ricocheting wildly. Just like armor, there's a certain percentage chance that the bullet will penetrate or ricochet at a given angle and a given velocity. The projectiles work well with destructible meshes. These are really easy to create in Unreal Engine 4. It's just a few clicks and you change a mesh you've modeled up into a destructible mesh. So you can see these break into fragments nicely. Finally, I've modeled up my own little firing range. Just like in real life, bullets ricochet up into the sky. Okay, I'll get started on the tutorial. We'll click Epic Launcher. Launch. This tutorial is aimed at people who are new to the Unreal Engine. Uh, you should have some programming experience. You should know what object-oriented programming is and how to use it. And you will need a high school level of mathematics education. We'll be using some vector maths. So we'll click New Project, C++, First Person. We'll change the quality to Scalable. This is just so we can see the traces behind the bullets well. And we'll keep the starter content in there. I'll call it Tutorial. Click Create Project. We'll come back when it's loaded up. Okay, so this is the window that comes up when you first create a new first-person project. And you can uh, click play and have a look around at what Epic's already given you in the level. Uh, just click inside the window to capture the mouse, and you'll see they've already got a few physics objects around to play with. Just uh, hit the escape key when you're done. And then the first thing we'll look at is down at the bottom left, and it's the content browser. And what we're interested is in is in the first person CPP folder under blueprints, and it's the first person projectile blueprint. We'll double click that, and up comes the blueprint editor. Now, I was initially a bit annoyed that I had to learn about blueprints and how to use them, but because I already knew C++, but eventually I um, got to really love them because they are just a much quicker way of coding. So um, essentially a blueprint is, is just the same thing as a C++ class definition. You can see at the top left, these are our member variables, and we're interested in the projectile movement component. So you click on it and scroll down 
and we want to hook into the on projectile bounce event. So we'll click plus and up comes our event hook. We can use this to execute our own custom code and it also comes with two parameters, the hit result struct, which I'll break apart here and you can see it contains a lot of different variables and the impact velocity vector. I've done a quick MS Paint to show you the different variables in a hit result struct. Uh, I'll just go to the desktop, find it. So you can see here that the location is slightly different from the impact location, which is very important. There's the direction of the impact normal. And if you use the get velocity function, it will return a vector in this direction already. Okay. I'll start by writing some pseudocode. I'll just right click anywhere and type in comment. And first we'll decide whether to penetrate. The next thing I'll do is I'll go over here and I'll just hit the C key, which does the same thing. And I'll type in uh, compute exit location, which is the first thing we want to do if the projectile is penetrating. And we're also going to create a compute exit location function, which serves the exact same purposes in C++. It just keeps our blueprint nice and neat if we want to do some a complex function with a simple um, with a simple idea, I guess, with a simple concept. We'll call it compute exit location. And over on the right, as long as we've got this selected, sometimes um, you might not see, yeah, this will disappear, so you make sure you have this selected and you'll see the inputs and outputs over here. So we'll make a uh, hit result, and the type of variable will be a hit result struct. I could search through here and find it, but I'll just type in hit. We'll also use the impact velocity vector. The output will be an exit location. Also a vector. Uh, in games programming, technically a 3D point in space is different from a 3D vector. But we, we use the same variable because they're just three floats in a single structure. Um, and we'll also use a result found boolean. Just in case we don't find a good result in the course of our function. So how do we want this function to work? We'll do a quick MS Paint. Here's our hit object. This is our projectile. We want to use a function called uh, multi-sphere trace. And what this will do is take a start point, which will start here, and an end point, which will be this. And it will trace a sphere through the 3D scene. And any time it hits an object, it'll give us a structure of the hit, the hit result. You can, there's, there's lots of different trace functions. So you can trace a line, you can trace all the different types of shapes. Uh, all the 
all the functions not beginning in multi will only return the first object hit or the in the case of uh, by channel you can choose different channels some of them are user defined not entirely sure myself what Cameron does but you could choose for example the visibility channel we don't want that because the uh, projectile might go through something visible like a fire for example so we'll do a multi sphere trace for objects and since there could be multiple objects it will return an array of hit result structs and there could feasibly be an object inside our hit object so it would return that hit as well so we want to find this specific hit result how do we get this point well we simply take the impact velocity and add an arbitrary distance I'm going to add five meters if our hit object were to be longer than five meters then we wouldn't find a result so we'll just hope we never come to that okay we'll hook up the execution path and to find the uh, initial start point of the sphere trace we'll normalize the impact velocity vector then we'll um, multiply that vector by a float the the normalized vector if you remember is a vector of length one but in the direction of the original vector so the unreal units are in centimeters so 500 centimeters will be five meters and then finally to get that point into our 3d world we'll break this hit result and we'll add we'll add two vectors a vector plus vector to the location of the initial hit and there's our start point our end point is that initial uh, hit location now what's the radius of our projectile well that is actually in this collision component so we drag this out into our event graph drag a line out and type radius and we'll get sphere radius too easy we also have to define the different types of objects that will hit so we'll click make array and we'll do four different types we'll do world static objects world dynamic we'll do pawn which is different players and we'll do ooh, we'll do five we'll do physics body and finally we'll do destructible And that's it for the inputs for the multi sphere trace function. We're going to get out an array of hit result structs. We'll loop through them, so we'll just type loop in and we'll do a for each loop. Connect up the dots. And in each loop, we want to compare the hit the hit actor an actor is just I, I guess most of the uh, objects in an unreal scene are going to be actors uh, and we'll compare this hit actor with that hit actor and we'll do that with uh, by typing an object and the equal symbol and we'll see if this hit actor is equal to that hit actor now what do we do then we'll right click and we'll type if and 
uh, an if statement is called branch in blueprints. Connect up the loop execution. Whoops, almost there. Okay, if, if we match the objects, then we'll return that the location of that object and we'll tick result found because we found a result. Now what if we get through looping all of the objects and we still haven't found a match? Well, we'll make another return node which you can do with uh, control C and control B or just control W. and we'll leave it as a, a result not found. Okay, you can hit save and compile. And now go back to this uh, tab over here, event graph. And now you can drag your function from over to the left, or you can right click and search for it with the compute exit location there. Connect bid dots again and now we should have a exit location what now well uh, the first thing I tried did not work at all so don't fall into the same trap the first thing I tried was you get a uh, on projectile bounce and then you teleport our projectile over to here. Don't do that. Um, the After the on projectile bounce event, the uh, code will still do some maths to do with bouncing and it will try and make it go in that direction and it, it won't work at all even if you change the velocity of this teleported projectile. There's nothing you can do to make that work so don't even try it. What you should do is spawn a uh, completely new object here, give it a velocity, and then destroy this actor. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to just right click here and type in spawn and find spawn actor from class. Change it to my uh, first person projectile. We'll drag out a spawn transform and click make transform and you can see that's just a combination of uh, location, rotation and scale. We'll set the owner by uh, finding the get owner function. The owner will be the player who shot the projectile and we want our new projectile to have an owner so that we know uh, you know, who it might damage, for example. Uh, the exit location will connect up here. The rotation we don't need to set because of the way our projectile movement component works. Uh, next thing we need to set the velocity here. So we'll take the return value, drag out a line and type in our uh, projectile movement. That wasn't too helpful actually, but if you go to the very bottom, uh, we'll get projectile movement. And then we'll type in velocity and we'll set its velocity. What velocity should it have? Well, at the moment, we'll just do a simple calculation of the um, impact velocity times a half. We'll just type vector and then star for multiply and uh, get a vector times float function. Multiply it by 0 0.5 and connect it up. Finally, we'll destroy the current actor. 
this um this only sets a flag somewhere so that next time the unreal engine is destroying actors this one will be destroyed so we could actually execute more code after this and it will still work but otherwise we should have a working uh, projectile penetration code so just hit compile up here and we'll exit this and go back to our level now we need something to penetrate through so we'll drag out a cube move it up a bit hit scale up here uh, we'll take off the scale snapping make a very thin object and then hit play it will be hard to see but you can uh, you can see that it will penetrate the object but then it goes right through the floor as well I'm going to remedy that right now we'll make some logic for decide whether to penetrate we'll do a branch or an if And we'll get the length of the impact velocity. And so we'll say if the velocity is larger than, say, 16 meters per second. Then the, uh, then we'll continue on to this, uh, this code here and if it's not we'll do nothing which will just let the projectile bounce as normal compile hit play and this time we can see that it uh, just bounces along the ground you also notice that um, when we hit a physics body the projectiles uh, destroy themselves uh, this is actually coded in C++, so we'll go fix that now. We'll go down to the content browser and get into Tutorial Projectile. And here you can see the function in the, in the C++ file, the onHit function, and it says if we hit a physics object, add an impulse, which means uh, you know, the physics object will move because we hit it and then destroy the projectile. We don't want to do that, we'll just comment it out. Hit build solution. This will take a while, so I'll um, come back. Okay, I'm back and it built. So um, now it should simply bounce off the uh, physics objects. Or if it's the first thing we hit, it should penetrate them. And there you go. Thanks for watching. Now one thing I forgot was to handle the case in which we didn't find an exit location. So if we go into our first person projectile class blueprint and find the compute exit location function and we'll do a uh, branch If we do find a result, we can just continue as normal. And if we don't find a result, we'll simply destroy the projectile actor. Save, compile, and we're all done.